Hey there again, everybody. Um, in this video, this kind of reaction video, uh, we're going to be looking at what is um, kind of entitled the longest Maytag on the middle fork of the salmon, or as you can sort of see here, uh, middle fork salmon river 2013 lit longest Maytag. Um, it's, it's a about a seven year old video, seven year old video, excuse me. Um, and you know, it's uh, I've seen it before. Many of you may have seen it before as well. Um, and if you want to see the full video, because I probably won't watch the entire thing here, a little, there will be a link to it in the description there. Um, so before we jump into it, please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. Leave your questions or comments down there in the comments section. I'd love to talk to you guys about stuff, you know, answer your questions. You know, leave any sort of comments you guys like to, you know, good reviews, bad reviews, you know, leave any sorts of comments down there, it'd be awesome. Um, and please hit that subscribe button as well. I really do want to hit 75 subscribers by the end of the year. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the video here. Follow him and may get Maytag too. Yeah, they're yeah, getting Maytag hardcore. 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 Oh shit. That's where you're not supposed to go. Oh, yes. oh they're history. Oh yes, their eyesight. Oh. So Besides the, the, the cameraman, and uh, the narrators, the sports announcers, I guess I'll refer to them as now, uh, you know, these guys definitely got into the hole and got surfed a little bit there. That's bad news for those boys. Death defying action, let me tell you. That's some death defying action. They're still there. They're still there. They are still... Can I say that... These two guys who are kind of sports announcing this really remind me of, you know, the the people you might see out on like a flat water trip or like a, a lower class river trip, you know, sitting in their boats. Um, I, want, I don't want to say it sound too, you know, stereotypical here, but, you know, I get, I do see a lot of people, you know, sitting on, the, on their boats or whatnot, no life jacket on, you know cracking PBRs one after another or something like that. You know, that's what these guys sound like to me. Um, again, I don't mean to be too stereotypical or, you know, judgmental about these guys, uh, but, you know, that's kind of how they sound to me there. There! Oh, my God! I do like how, you know, both of the, the rafters here are on the high side of their boat, you know. Sure, they did lose an oar there. That guy's trying to get his oar back in there, but they're both on that high side. You know, they're looking at each other, trying to communicate with each other there. Um, you know, that, the, the bad toss there might have been just, you know, a, uh, a time where, you know, knots got up in the bag there, or the rope got wound up on itself in the bags, or the throw rope bags anyway. Uh, that's why it's a, a nice idea to, you know, throw your bags quite a bit, you know, restuff them all the time, so you're kind of avoiding that catch up there on the line. Um, I'm not entirely stoked about you know them trying to throw a rope to their friends there um, I, I'm guessing that they're in a you know a, a party here since they got boats further downstream there um, you know I've never had too much of a success or you know had been in scenarios where I felt like throwing um, a rope from a boat is a good idea um, I don't really know what would, have, what would have happened in this scenario. You know, you might have been able to get the boat, the rope to the boat. You know, the guys could have grabbed onto it. Um, but then again, the the other raft is still moving. So you know, there's that whole situation of the two guys who are getting may tagged or surfed here. They're having to deal with a rope that you know is still moving further and further downstream as you know they're staying stationary and the secondary point is moving away from from them. So, you know, I'm not entirely stoked on that, but, you know, I, I think it was a, a very noble attempt by, you know, these this other boat. Yeah, they should have never went in there. That's what they tell you, you do not go in the keeper hole. Again, these guys are basically just your standard sports announcers, you know. Uh, you know, announcing the action that's going on here. With a fair look on them boys. Shit, man. They're still there. 
Man, this is one of the longest May tags I've ever seen. They're still there. <laughs> hey. Videos are awesome. You know, I love taking videos and photos myself, but I'm not going to prioritize that video or the photo over somebody's, you know, life or well being. Um, you know, I would probably have taken a couple photos if I was there. I mean, you know, you could always speculate, you know, what we, you would do if you were there, you know, taking a couple videos, maybe, or a couple photos, maybe a video, but, you know, grab my rope bag, hauled, ran down the bank as fast as I could, you know, and trying to help these guys out. Be quiet on the film. You don't need no heavy duty thing. These guys are going to probably want to see this video. You know, I probably wouldn't have. I would have actually smacked these guys without, because they didn't help. It's just bad. Those guys are high sighting for their lives. And this guy, you can even tell, is actually already starting to point for stuff. He's already saying, he's like, hey, we need help. You know, get somebody out there on that rock. You know, that big rock right there, we can see the, you know, a person standing at. You know, it looks like the guy does have a rope there, but, you know, the person in the boat says, hey, we need help. We need to get a rope. We need something here, you know, move your butts and come help us. Again, sportscasters who, you know, not really want, not really willing to help. Um, I, I am happy to see that there are actually people up there with throw bags now. Uh, the rest of your guys got them up there fighting with the throw bags. They said the rest of their guys coming up with throw bags. Um, personally, to me, there is kind of a, an unwritten rule or unwritten law of the river is you know you're not out there and you know your own little groups and you know you're using your own little groups of safety as you go down the river if i see somebody in trouble out on the river you know i'm going to stop i'm going to help them even if they're not part of my group out there you know um especially on the middle fork here you know the middle fork is a is a f awesome river to run and you know i've been lucky enough to you know run it about five times now so that's been awesome but, you know, being out there, you know, a ways away from, you know, medical help, you know, any sort of help like that, you know, you're really relying on your group and the other people out there to, to help out. Um, and what these guys said, you know, the rest of their group coming to help out, it says, screw their group, you know, you go help them. Because, you know, you're out there, you're a rafter too, you know, part of it is, you know, treat others how you expect to be treated. You know, it, there's always those situations where you're glad it's someone else who got into a spot. Um, I actually had a uh, incident this past summer, um, which actually resulted in my first commercial flip. Uh, you know, during that time, I actually thought I killed three kids because you know my boat hit a log, and you know that was just topsy turvy for me. And you know everybody was swimming, the boat it was upside down. But you know, there was that situation uh, like a day later where, you know, I was kind of um, thinking, you know, maybe, you know, I would have been happy if somebody else hit that. But, you know, there was also the other situation or the other thought of, you know, I'm glad I hit that first because the boat behind me might not have seen that. Um, and it, it was just a freak accident. You know, this log was submerged under the water. I only saw about two foot of it sticking out. But, you know, you can get in the mindset of I'm glad that was somebody else and not me, but you know you you you, get, you definitely got to help out there, guys. That's why we stopped and scouted. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There it goes. There it goes. We're gonna let Come it go. on. No. no. Put it back 
Oh, oh they're doing a they're doing a complete Maytag circle oh, jerk there. One guy, oh, come on. one guy went out. Oh, Are they God, both still in there? Yes. Yeah, they're, 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 they're both there. They're both there. Um, I'm not entirely too sure where the other rescuer ran off to or the other throw rope person. You see the guy standing there on the bank. I'm kind of curious why he hasn't gotten out further, like up on this boulder. Because I, I think if you get on this boulder, it'd be a lot easier toss to that boat. Um, I don't know what exactly was going through these guys' mind. Maybe they were, you know, waiting for their the fellow rafters here to abandon boat and, you know, jump out and swim. But I've been in that position where, you know, somebody's got stuck on a hydraulic or a rock. I've gotten out of my boat, back upstream, and I managed to toss them a rope, which they managed to grab and, you know, either wrap around the frame somewhere or tie onto the boat. And I managed to, you know, haul them out of um, uh, the hydraulic or off the rock. Um, it's, you know, it's a lot faster than setting up a Z-drag or a mechanical advantage. And, you know, you can get a lot done with just, you know, hauling on a rope and, you know, bumping somebody out of, out of a rock or a hydraulic. Oh, my gosh. Come on, guys. Hang on. It'll spit them out eventually. It's got to. I mean, it's got to. Something. I can't believe those other guys ain't throw no throw bags to them. Well, that's a hell of a throw. Oh, I'm saying the Shit. These guys were saying it's a hell of a throw. Looking at this, that can't be, at least from the top of that boulder, that couldn't be any more than 75 foot. You know, if you get a 75 foot rope there, you might be able to get it out there. Again, you know, this is kind of a different perspective, so they might, it might be over 75 foot. But you know, that's why, you know, I like to practice with throw ropes. Um, I'm hoping that you guys practice with your throw ropes as much as you can. And I actually, you know, listened uh, to an old uh, a podcast and you know they actually mentioned that you know a good throw bag has got you know isn't just you know the standard 50 uh, 50 footer 75 footer but it's got the maximum amount of rope that you as a person can throw uh, you know plus about 10 foot which I think is an awesome idea so you're not standing there with you know a 70 little 75 foot rope and you have to make like an an 80 foot throw on um, in one of those bags you know you you gotta practice. Make sure that you, you know, you know your own rope length and stuff like that. But you know, the, a rope bag that you can comfortably throw that has the, as much rope as you can throw comfortably. You know, that's a great idea. I think, and you know, that one might have helped out in this situation. Guys, maybe we can get a rope to him. What the fuck? Come on, let's give it a try. They, these sports casters are finally getting into it. This guy just said maybe we could get a rope to it. You know. And we're about five minutes into the video, I think about four minutes into their Maytag here, you know. They should have thrown that rope, I, in my opinion, a lot earlier, you know, instead of just sitting back there like sportscasters. By this point in time, these guys are probably dead exhausted too, you know. I've been in spots where I've kind of surfed my little R1 boat for about a minute. And, you know, I popped out of that dead exhausted, you know, and scratching my head trying to figure out where, you know, my partner boat was. Um, that's a situation for another video. They're high siding for their lives in there, let me tell you. But yeah, that distance doesn't look more than, you could probably get a 75 foot rope out to those guys. And I don't know why that the guy there in the orange dry suit hasn't thrown his bag yet. You know, they've had plenty of time sitting there. Not only that, but you have another person downstream. So, you know, what would the overall cost of, you know, trying to get a throw bag out to them, um, in my opinion, because you got, hopefully in your group, you got multiple people with throw bags and you can kind of space each other out so you're not having everybody in one spot. You can put somebody like upstream, somebody downstream, and somebody further downstream from there. Oh, look who came back, the other kind of rescuer. Both of them have ropes out and ready. It looks like this guy actually has his rope in a coil already, um, you know, I don't know, again, I don't know why they haven't thrown them yet.
Wait a minute, let's go back there. It looks like there was a rope in the water. Uh... Maybe not. Oh, there it is, there it is. There was a rope there. So somebody, somebody did actually throw a rope. Um, it probably came off the other bank and, you know, zooming ahead there, I, I guess I missed the throw. But, you know, that being considered, you know, you got one rope in there, it missed. So, you know, get that backup throw back out to those guys, you know, get multiple ropes out there. It's, um, you know, everybody likes having to throw ropes because, you know, they're, they're ropes. You can throw them out to buddies and whatnot. But I don't think a lot of people actually practice with them and can actually, you know, recall and re-throw a rope um, fast. There, and there's definitely situations where, you know, I was glad to have, you know, a coil in one hand like half the rope in one hand and a bag in the other hand so I could throw one end to somebody and then, you know, I missed so I chucked the other end and, you know, I, I still missed actually, but, you know, somebody else managed to get them on their rope, but, you know, I had two throws ready to go. Um, so it's, you know, quick quick actions, you know, you see somebody miss, you know, chuck a bag right after the other bag, trying, trying to get those guys. We do have a lot of rescuers on the sides now. Um, looked at this before and there's a guy over here on the right side who looks like he has his dry suit unzipped. He's got one of those back entry dry suits and then he's not wearing his life jacket, which, you know, I wouldn't... Both of those are bad, opinion, bad things in my opinion. You know, you're, you're out there, you know, it looks like this guy is willing to back up his buddy there on the bank. And if you're willing to be there in the rescue situation, you know, you have to have that equipment on. You know, the dry suit and the life jacket, I um, mean, I guess depending on the weather, you know. But, you know, if you're wearing a dry suit, you got to zip that sucker up because, you know, dry suits are good at keeping water out. But if you have anything open, they're also good at keeping water in as well. So, you know, if this guy ended up swimming, one, he's not wearing his life jacket, so he's not going to float as well. And then two, he's got that dry suit unzipped, so you know a lot of water is going to come into his dry suit, and you know that could take him straight down to the bottom of the river, or it could take him right down the river, and no one could really catch up to him. Oh, it's a long throw. I don't know if Mike can make it or not. So, I I guess these two guys are buddies of the sportscaster there, but you know it, it's good to see that they're finally getting in there and helping out these two guys here. Sure hope so. Is he gonna throw his rope here? He's talking to the guys. There goes a rope. Uh. Wow, he didn't make it. Threw it behind him. Yeah, I mean that's not bad, but you know. This now we need him. He's. Can't even believe this is happening. I guess he was working on his, coiling his rope back up there. Uh, when I say coiling, there is a difference between actually coiling a rope and then stuffing it back in your bag. Um, if you guys take a swift water rescue course, which is, you know, an excellent resource for, you know, getting into kind of these, the bigger scenarios here. Um, the wrap in here is called Tappan Falls. It's about a class three rapid and, you know, it, it's uh, definitely a big hole on that left side. You know, I've seen that left side before. It, it's pretty big, but that swift water rescue course teaches you some really awesome skills, you know, about, you know, Recall on a rope, coiling it back up, and then chucking it back out oh, it's with a good amount of speed. You know, having to restuff a bag takes a lot longer than just having to recoil a rope, and you can rechuck a re, you can chuck a coil a lot faster than you can. You know, re, um, restuff a bag and throw it again. Uh 
again, I mean, about eight minutes into this surf, and these guys have got to be, you know, more than dead tired. These guys go, have got to be exhausted from hanging onto that boat, you know, high sighting that boat. Um, I'm a little disappointed from the the guys over there on river left you know the the guy there in the orange has just been standing there I you know again I don't know the specifics of what was you know too much going on here but you know I would have liked to see these guy that guy in the orange you know up further you could probably have chucked your rope over that rock too you know sure there's that whole thing of you know stabilizing yourself if there's a swimmer but these guys aren't going anywhere yet you could always chuck your rope you know get it to the guys in the in the raft there and find somewhere stable where you can you know anchor on to something or have your buddies come up to you grab your life jacket or grab you know around your waist grab you anyway or grab onto that rope and help pull these guys out of that hydraulic there um so you know a little a little disappointed that i haven't seen too much action from those guys i gotta stop for a second standing here for so long I can hardly hold the cameras yeah he's been standing there for a long time all right oh there they go I'm gonna go back and just look at what they were doing before they flipped I did kind of skip ahead there um, so looks like they were crawling to the back of the boat there Oh, there they go. Yep. No, so the, the the hydraulic just kind of whipped their boat around. Um, there is a line across the bottom of their boat. I don't know if that was attached there before or if that was from somebody's line. I gotta I'm gonna go look back again. Well, I might get that throw bag over to those guys. Oh, there was a bag on the boat there. Or somebody's rope was on the boat. This guy said they got big problems now. They had big problems when they didn't realize that boat was coming out of the hydraulic. They should have realized that earlier. Um, and now, yeah, they got people in the water. And these guys over here on the left side bank are finally cocking their arms back. They're getting ready to throw their bags now. Oh, which, again, in my opinion, they should have thrown their bags a lot earlier than this. There's one of them. Yeah, they both popped up. They're downstream. Those other guys better start rescuing on those guys. Holy smokes. The boat finally comes out. And we got rescue action going on now. You know, it's... In my opinion, it's it's a little sad that it took it... Took the, the guys on the bank about nine minutes before they really started throwing their ropes. Um, again, in my opinion, you know, if you see a boat stuck in a hydraulic or anything like that, on a rock in a hydraulic, you know, do your best to get out of, to get your boat to the shore, which these guys did do. You know, get out there. You know, there's no harm in trying to throw ropes to you, to these guys. You know, there was a couple ropes thrown there, but I would have liked to have seen a lot more ropes going out there to try and rescue these guys. Um, and you know. The outcome for the two guys there in the raft, you know, um, in the video description here, it did say one of these guys broke about five ribs, you know, and the other guy ruptured his spleen, which is, you know, it's kind of a, a terrible thing to think about when you're on, you know, in the middle of the middle fork, and you have uh, suddenly a guy with broken rib cage and a guy with a ruptured spleen. You know, that's, in my opinion, the, the spleen itself is an, an, uh, an evac situation, you know, you know, get that guy out of there because, you know, he, he ruptured something within his abdomen, you know, it might be internal bleeding there, you know. Uh, in my opinion as well, this whole situation could have been, you know, could have been avoided, and I keep saying this, if the, the, the bystanders, because, you know, that's basically what they were here, actually got ropes tied to that boat, and, you know, I would have seen a lot... I would have liked to see a lot more ropes being thrown. Um, again, you know, I don't know too much of the specifics there. I don't know the water level. But, you know, there's no harm in just trying to get a rope out to those guys. And, you know, there were a couple ropes thrown, but, you know, throw some more ropes out there. Get it. Until you get a rope on that boat, just keep trying. You know, keep keep trying. Keep throwing a rope. Um, other than that, you know, it's uh, definitely not the most glorious video out there. 
Uh, I think that the video itself has got a lot of views because it's titled Longest Maytag on the Metal Fork or Metal Fork Salmon River 2013 Longest Maytag. And you know, that can kind of be a bit of clickbait because you know, there there is a boat surfing out there um, and people like watching river carnage. It's just how, how it happens. Um, but besides that, you know, these guys definitely could have acted a lot better. Um, you guys can agree or disagree with me, you know, I'd be happy to, to look at either situation, you know, please leave those down there in the comment section. Um, again, give this video a thumbs up and please consider subscribing and I'll catch you guys in the next video.